know, we're going to expect improvement again. Uh, we're going to aim at playing finals football again at the Essendon Football Club, which is what, which is what the club is all about. We're, we're comfortable that we're pushing in the right direction. But Matty Knights, well, he's begutted, really. They really weren't competitive for a lot of the game tonight. Pre-season, the Bombers were pretty bubbly, pretty high expectations. Right now, they are below par at one and three, and their coach, Matthew Knights, joins us for the first time on the couch. Welcome, Nida. Thank you, Jared. Tell me. It's fair comment, I guess. I uh, heard you and your president, David Evans. It was a, it was talked up pretty positively, and right now, I think uh, you'd be disappointed with where you're at. Yeah, we certainly haven't sort of struck any rhythm in our game at this stage. We've played, you know, portions of the game. I think the portions of the Geelong game were strong, and then. The Carlton game was, you know, pretty good over the four quarters, but, you know, the two other games, West Coast and Fremantle, have been well below par and, you know, just not where the, up to the standard which we think we should be playing at and, you know, it'd be nice to hit some rhythm soon and play some better footy. You took over the poison chalice. Whoever took over from the legend, <laughs> Kevin Shooty, was always going to, I guess, uh, do it tough. But I've been surprised at uh, almost the vehemence uh, sometimes of some of the Bombers supporters. Do, do you feel as if you've been embraced yet? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, it's always, you know, I've never seen it as an issue to follow Kevin, you know. I mean, Kevin was great to me when I when I was at the club and coaching Bendigo and always had a great rapport with him. So I've never really been concerned about that. And, um, you know, respect and, you know, <coughs> doing your time is important. And, mm -hmm. you know, the Essendon supporters have got high expectations. And until we play consistently and, you know, get to where we want to get to, mm -hmm. um, you, the, the acknowledgement is probably not going to come. And that's fair enough. And, uh you know, I understand that. I'm just keen to keep working hard and working with this great group we've got. And, you know, I think the proof will be in the putting down the track. Matthew, you say this great group you've got, you've won 19 out of 49. Yep. It's disappointing by anyone's measure, isn't it? Uh, when I say a great group, I, I really support the character and the values of the players and their willingness to, to come to training with enthusiasm and the drive to be better. Uh, yes, we're not playing, you know, with great rhythm or we're pl not playing with, you know, any real flow at the moment. So, you know, I think that will come and you know, I'm really confident the list is there and, you know, just look at, you know, at a meeting with, you know, the young key position players today, Hurley, Pears, Gumbledon and Hooker and, and Paddy Ryder and, you know, it really gives you great heart going to the future with those young men because they're great people off the field but you also know they've got above average talent and it's just going to take time to mould them. But are they ready? Should they be playing league football, some of those blokes you just mentioned? Oh, I think they should. I mean, they're definitely the future of the club, um, those five guys along with, you know, Darcy Danaher and Jake Carlisle and, and guys like that. So... You know, we're going to keep playing them and, and keep moulding them together. And then you, you look at two midfielders, two 18-year-old midfielders that played in our midfield the other night, Jake Melshkam and Travis Collier, who I think have really acquitted themselves well in the two games they've played. So it's probably an area that we have to improve our midfield, and I think those two young lads um, have shown a fair bit. But you've used the word young about four times already, and yep. yet pre-season you made a point of saying, it's our time, forget young, we're not baby bombers. Are they behind schedule? No, yeah, no, that's fair enough. I think coming from the playing group that they were keen to be known as men and, and to compete as men, and we're keen to do that. Yep. And we're not, you know, whoever you put out there, the game doesn't know how old you are as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, I'm really wrapped to have Jake Melshkam and Travis Collier in the team because they deserve to play on form. Um, in a perfect world, they may not be selected in their first year and we may have not, not have thought they'd come this early, mm. but they have and, you know, they've, they've shown good form. So you just play them, you know, irrelevant of age or experience and... You know, you just got to pick them on form if they deserve it. Matty, what's ha what happens in the coaching box when there's a, a run? Now, you've had two nine-goal runs against you this year and six from Frio at the Fortress, Eddie Head Stadium. Yep. How does that happen and what do you do while it's happening? Yeah, I think the main thing there is execution, Mike. I, I think on the weekend and, and in the Carlton game, we put some different plans in place during those periods of time. But we had shots on goal and, and we had next shots on occasions and we just didn't execute the shots on goal. So, you know, I think that's important. To, to hold a run, to, to score a goal, but, you know, we just got to get better at executing defensively also. There's also other periods of the game against Geelong and Carlton where we really held strong for long periods and prevented, say, two really good sides from scoring. Um, so we're just having periods in games where we're falling away. Now, there's been some uh, former champions of your football club by the name of Matthew Lloyd and Scott Lucas uh, who have been openly critical of the game plan and the way the team's playing and probably, I think... Even Hurdy, a legend of the footy club, has, has queried the way you're playing. How do you, how do you cop Before that? Before you answer that, Matthew, uh, we've got some audio of uh, Matthew Lloyd, and this is what he had to say regarding defence on Melbourne Radio. Uh, Matty Knights, he's often said that um, I'm playing a game style that will win, me, win this club a premiership, and to me, defence is what wins your premierships. We saw the West Coast Eagles win mm. one 
and Quinton Lynch kicked, you know, 60 or goals or so. But every side I've played, you know, Brisbane, when we were going strong in 2000, so in the last 10 to 15 years, you can't uh, just let goals happen the way the Bombers do uh, time after time without something happening. How does that sit with you? I mean, you coached uh, these blokes last year. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the reality. I mean, you know, Matthew and Scott and James and Tom Harley and guys like that are in the media and they're going to have opinion. Um, at times I will agree, at times I will disagree. Um, and as long as they're objective with all clubs, you know, I think that's the thing about James, whether it be Essendon or, you know, Carlton or Hawthorne, he's very objective. And that's all you expect out of, of those people. We pay, you know, defence and the defensive elements of the game, the respect it deserves and our players have just got to get better at executing it. And probably at times as a coaching group, we've got to get better at teaching it. So. You know that'll come in time, and we're sorry, but you don't. Do you resent the fact that these blokes are openly critical of you on the airwaves? No, I don't resent that. No, no. I mean, as I said, they've got they've got roles to play, and at times I might agree, at times I might disagree, and, mm-hmm. and that's their view. Yeah. Expectation S and Footy Club's always been huge, and I'm sure you're finding out about it, and you you know about it. The expectation on you know Tate Pearce has been fa- he's been fantastic for you. Joe Watson's captaincy already has been fantastic. Do, does the weight of expectation? When do you see Essendon being a top four side, and, and how how do you make that happen? Yeah, we openly said that we were aiming to play finals football this year and that's still very much on the agenda and we'll st- still keep going after that aggressively. And obviously over the next sort of three years we're looking to really push up the ladder. So, you know, that's that's what our plans are and it's a fairly aggressive vision, it's an exciting vision and I'm certainly not going to back away from it. And uh, just on Joe Watson, I thought the other night just showed what a great captain he's mm. going to be when the he's chips were down. He, he willed himself on some physical contests the other night in the second half of that game that really demonstrated we've got a special person to lead our club. What has to happen in the game, though, you know, you are where you are now, to make you that top four side? Is it is it the tackling's got a better defensive or just the maturity of the players? Is there, you know, two or three, it's for the Essendon fans, two or three areas you identified that will make you that better team? Yeah, I think our contested ball and our tackling's been quite strong this year mm. if you look at the, the data and the numbers. Um, where we obviously have to get better is, you know, one, taking our opportunities ourselves, but secondly, when opposition teams do get a run on, that we have the calmness and the attitude just to take control and, and just slow the game down a little bit. And, you know, we're working hard behind the scenes on that. But, uh, you know, Carlton, it worked really well, but the other games, it hasn't. So we've just got to keep going back to the well and working out of the track. Yeah. If there are 50 A graders in the competition, say, how many of them wear red and black? Uh, I would say only one. At that's this, Joe Watson. That's our captain. Yeah. Paddy Ryder should, should he not? Paddy Ryder, uh, I believe, will become an A grade player. He has to understand that. He has to demand the ball and he has to call for the ball at times. This is a young man with prodigious talent that I'm encouraging to call for the ball and demand the ball in good spots. And when he does that and, and gets a bit of enthusiasm to a game, he will really take off. And I've got no doubt it'll come because he's a pretty competitive person. He showed that in the ruck last year um, and maybe just takes a little bit of pushing and prodding for myself to, to finally get there. But he is a, a brilliant young man and uh, he's going to thrill the Essendon supporters for many years to come. What's uh, Matthew Knight's learned about himself in the last two and a half years <laughs> that you maybe didn't know uh, when you started this job? Well, I realised the temper's still there and uh, <laughs> I think at half time the other night it was, uh, you know, we had you know, a good discussion and you know, even the post the Fremantle game we had some home truths and had a really good talk. So, you know, that's part of it and, uh, you know, I'm learning about my players all the time uh, and how I, they handle, you know, whether they're coming a crisis mm-hmm. or how they handle situations. But... You know, I feel, I feel good for the experience. You know, I really love coaching the Essendon Footy Club. It's a great club with high expectations. And, you know, David Evans, Ian Robson and the board give me magnificent support. Mm. So that's well, all I can ask for. Will Fletcher play next year? I'd love him to play next year. Right? So he's still good enough? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he could play for another couple of years. I, uh, I really rate Dustin and he's, he's really good for young Tate and Kyle. And one final one. We've had 45-minute halves. We've had five-fifths from Brett Ratton. We've had four interchange and two substitutes. We've had Damien Hardwick with two and two. Have you got another uh, solution to add to the confusion on whether we should slow the game down or not? No, no, I'm just keen to get the chocolates on Anzac Day. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, no, well, 430s is, will do. OK, well, there is one final one. That was a short answer. You've been reappointed until the end of 2012. Do you ever sense the shadow of... The great man here, James Hurd, behind you. <laughs> Why would you ask that? Well, when he came well, into I mean, the room, he, he came into the rooms the other day, and Carlton he was reasonably unshaven, so uh, he certainly had a shadow. No, James is uh, 
James and Tonya and the kids come down the rooms, very supportive. And uh, they haven't run through a banner for two years; they're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I think Matthew has to go. Actually, <laughs> the flame might come one day with James. Appreciate your time to, uh, tonight, Matthew. Uh, obviously, the Anzac Day match is uh, an extraordinary one. It'll be a big build-up. But uh, thanks for taking time out to see us tonight. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks. Matthew thanks, Knight's thanks, coach thanks. of the Bombers.